you look to let my peers see like I'm still moving with it, trying to make, you know, trying to push the bar, trying to make things better. Yeah. You know, some of your best work comes from the dramatic space and not comedy, which of course is how we first talked about. Why do you think that is? Well, I think I think the reason I think the reason uh the comedy I think the reason the comedy uh uh the drama took off is because I was trying to do the comedy at the time and every time I did a comedic film it bombed. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna even trip. It bombed because it always was like it sounded like Martin's movie or it sounded like Eddie's movie. So next thing you know, uh a guy by the name of Oliver Stone, big director, sees me in an audition. The next thing you know, I'm I'm in the movie Willie uh uh, any given Sunday, and Willie Beeman was born. My name is Willie. Willie Beeman. I keep the ladies screaming. You know what I'm saying? And so, and so, what I found was my whole thing was characters. My whole thing was doing characters. Like if it was Willie Beeman or or uh, Dead on the Ali, uh, who Bundini Brown, Muhammad Ali is a prophet. How are you gonna be God son? Should you come out to the garage to be number two? Or Ray Charles, hey, hey, you know what? Hey, hey, I'm gonna make it do what it do. Well, I got a woman way over town. It's good to me. Let these people understand. Let let these people see what we're doing right now. Just want to let people see what we're doing right now. Uh, so 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 what started happening was is that I was creating these dramatic parts, right? Let me get this right. These dramatic parts, but. I also want to get back to comedy. I want to get back to doing my stand-up, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, that's where I started. Some people may not even, you know, remember me from that. Uh, from Wanda, hey, for real now. Uh, from all these sort of crazy characters that I did. So we luckily now have a show called Dad Stop Embarrassing Me, which my daughter, Corinne Marie Fox, and myself, we created. And so we're doing a, a a show about our sort of our our lives, and so I get a chance to get back to that, get a chance to get back to the funny, and get a chance to get back to one of my uh, partners in crime that was on the Living Color, David Allen Greer. So, uh, and he's from Detroit. Now, you know what I'm doing. You know I know that. Shout out Detroit, <laughs> three one three, and the hair is popping. And the hair is popping. You know you 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 hinted at this earlier in our conversation. But you really were so politically engaged in the summer of 2020, and your visibility, it felt so important. I know it gave a lot uh, to people, but what did it do for you to be out there on the front line? Well, here's the thing. It's like, if, if, if what I've done in my career, if I sit back behind my gate and just close up and not get out and try to help, man, then, then what are we doing it for? I mean, literally, I, and I know sometimes it's a huge responsibility on black folk. Maybe we shouldn't say that we all have to to chip in. But listen, if you, you can't talk to Trayvon Martin's mom without feeling something. Arbor, Arbor, Ahmaud Arbery's father without feeling something. Seeing George, family without, George Floyd's family, family without feeling something. Look, I've been going to protests since Rodney King. So going on the front line... Um, you know, you want to be there to support. That's the first thing. You don't want to have to necessarily get in front of it. We don't have to do everything, but you just want to support those black leaders, those black people that are doing uh, uh, what they what they can to make sure that, that they just understand that we got a problem when it comes to black folks and when it comes to how we're just trying to live our life. We're not trying to do anything special. And even if you think about it, when you say black lives matter, all we're saying is matter. We're not saying better. So it's important that you get out there and let them know like, hey, I can't be comfortable with whatever success I had if I still feel like my people in my hometown or, or people that are out there trying to just do what they need to do are under seas. And so so you got to do it. And then sometimes you will hear people say, well, all the celebrities don't know what I, I said, man, what you talking about? You can't say nothing about me if you don't know what a syrup sandwich is. You can't say nothing to me if you don't know like how it feels to have a Coke bottle with no Coke and you fill it up with water and act like you had a Coke. You can't tell me nothing about having free lunch tickets, which is what I had when I was coming up. Uh, so when it, I'm not far removed from that. So when I see a brother being treated wrong, it's obvious. It's obvious. It's obvious 
then we have to be all hands on deck and we have to do as best we can to try to take that narrative and change it and make people understand that we have to uh, we have to bring about change. If not, I mean, I don't know where we'll be. So hopefully with the way things are moving right now, we'll get an opportunity to sort of right those wrongs. But we got to stay vigilant. It got to be all hands on deck. Yeah. You know, I love your Instagram post um, in the aftermath of the presidential election about how special it yeah. was for you and your daughters. Um, and that they know that anything is possible because of VP elect Kamala Harris. You wrote that that had even more meaning than some of the other major political moments that you've been a part of. Tell me a little bit about why that struck you um, in the way that it did. I'm going to tell you why, because I got two daughters, man, and I, I take my daughters to every political event. I've taken my oldest daughter, Corinne, uh, to DNC parties. I, I took all of them to the inauguration when Obama became president. I want them to know what that is at a young age. And I also want them to know that uh, it is that the older people have been getting it wrong. We are a decent people. And when it comes to that, to that role in, in, in our lives, the, the role of the president, no matter what happened, in, in, in society, we were always able to look at that role as a moral compass. We were always to look and see that that is a, a a position of decency. And I think that we got way off of that. And I think that we became uh, blinded by some of the things that people say that, that really are important. We talk about taxes or we talk about all these other things, but you could even make it biblical. What profits a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Yeah, we may gain some worldly things, but look at the soul that we're losing. We can't even look at a person without having some type of vitriol or, or, or anger towards each other. That's not how I want my kids growing up. That's not how anybody should want their kids growing up. So when I saw Joe Biden, who I've known Joe Biden for years, as a matter of fact, if any of you are uh, 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 YouTube surfing, uh, I actually sung for Joe Biden and his wife when they became uh, vice president, vice president elect. And when it comes to Kamala Harris, uh, before Kamala became vice president, she was running for something smaller. And we raised money for her in just a room and, 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 and a few people. And I said, that lady right there is special because although she was a judge, she had created programs for rehabilitation for us. So I think that we have a great opportunity to bring back decency to 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 that uh to that position also you know they 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 know that that we need a we need a hand they know that on our side of town that, that black folks need a hand in this situation and they're aware of that but when i look in my daughter's eyes and i look at both of my Annalise Fox and and Karen Fox and they can look up and see Kamala Harris man uh, that is special. And that is something that should be celebrated no matter what side of the aisle that you are on, because that's what America is supposed to be about. We're supposed to be about anyone can make it. And we shouldn't be angry that some people say, oh, it's a woman or it's a black. No, we should be happy about that. You know, if you get if you give us slack for being for being African-American, or all oh, they this and they that now for the negative. Why give us negative? When we actually achieve the biggest goal uh, 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 in, in, in the world, because what I always say is, is that we need balance. You know, we need perception. I remember when President Obama became uh, became the ele uh, the president elect. It changed our perception all over the world. It made us look good. It was like, man, because I would travel the world and sometimes our images that were being sent over was only one thing. But to see. President Obama giving something fly to fly and smart and intelligent. And so now with Kamala Harris, I applaud her. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing. Awesome. Jamie Foxx, you are not just an actor. You're also an activist. Thank you, oh, so, thank much you so much for chatting with me today. And, and here, I'm, I'm live right now, but I want y'all to understand she's beautiful. <laughs> Detroit. Aww. And the hair. Uh, <laughs> the hair ain't playing right now. The hair is vibe. Three one three two. You shouldn't be three one three two four eight. Baby, go down Detroit. You know how we get down. There it is. Thank you, Jamie. Fox. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. We are doing this for Soul. Uh, Soul will be out. Soul will be out December twenty fifth. Uh, this Christmas on Disney Plus. Uh, there is no charge. It's just a membership. 
So this Christmas, make sure you check out Soul, the first.